mashallah, the scholars, they, you know, yeah, they yeah, do a yeah, great yeah. job. Subhanallah. It's, it's, a, it's a really great topics, actually. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to talk about this thing, especially in the... Today is Yawm al Jumu'ah. Today is Yawm al Jumu'ah. Today is Friday, alhamdulillah. And I am starting the vlog right out of the masjid. I had to pick up some clothes because my dad is saying at Yatikaf. So this, that was like the masjid that I grew up at. Masjid Abu Bakr of New Orleans, which is, if you guys are ever in the area of New Orleans, come save us up to the masjid. Those here are really nice. Well, what is up everyone? Welcome back to the vlog. My name is Yusuf Truth. If you guys are new here, I make content about my lifestyle and I'm pretty open about my faith. I'm 21 years old and I'm high as a kite. No, I'm joking. <laughs> it's a bit of a sad one because this is, this is the last Friday in Ramadan. Um, so, inshallah, Eid is going to either be Sunday morning, who's calling me, or Monday morning. And me, so me and my sisters, we've been doing this thing on Eid every single year for the past, I think like it's been three years or four years. And so every year when Eid rolls around, me and my sisters, we make a list of things that we want for Eid gifts and uh, we give it to each other. And then from that list of things that we want, like so say for example, like I make a list of things that I want and then I send it to my sisters. They make a list of things that they want and they send it to me. And then I can pick from the list of things that they want. So it's kind of like a gift list so that regardless of what I get from them for Eid, they're happy with and they really, really appreciate it, you know? But there's pros and cons that comes to that, right? The pro is number one, they're really going to love what you get them regardless because it's what they already chose. But the con to it is that there, that aspect of giving a gift and having like a surprise is um, is not there. So say for example, like my sister really wants this expensive makeup palette and she she herself would never buy that, you know, like she wouldn't spend it, the money on, on, on that palette. But it's something that she would put on her Eid list so that she can justify like getting that you know what i mean so it's like a way it's like a cheat code of like treating yourself you know but this year this year we told each other that we're not going to do that because we've been really busy this ramadan my sisters started their own like islamic learning center uh business and it's been really it's been really hectic on their schedule because they're balancing that and they're balancing school and then hamna just got married so she's balancing all those three big things and then for me i've been traveling a lot and i've been bouncing around dallas and here in tarawi and like everything you know so we haven't had time to make the list so, so this year we kind of told each other why don't you just pick something like small so i think later on in this video i'm going to go to a mall and uh, i'm gonna pick some things out for my family because it's Eid. And so those of you that are watching that don't know what Eid is, Eid is basically, look at it as the Muslim Christmas. That's like the best way to put it. And it's like, if Christmas and the Met Gala were a thing, that's like basically what it is. You put it together and that's what it is for Muslims. So, but the more um, technical term of it is at the end of Ramadan, so at the end of our fasting month, God allows us to celebrate. He gives us a celebration called Eid. So for three days we celebrate. But that's basically like the biggest celebration uh, of the year for us Muslims. Eid, man. Eid is like the best time of the year. Eid on Sa'id, let's enjoy this happy day. Eid Mubarak, come on, let's celebrate. I got an email instead that I need to shoot for Ray Bands today. So I threw on this outfit right here, kind of. Um, bit springy kind of like it's like this linen top i posted an instagram picture right there you guys should follow me on instagram if you haven't yet but i'm shooting for ray-bans and these sunglasses are from ray-bans and if you guys can tell i don't know if you guys can see but there's cameras on each side of these and there's speakers on the back here so basically i'm promoting it they're called the ray-ban like stories line and um I'm shooting for them today, alhamdulillah. Crazy opportunities, you guys. Just want to take a moment. And I'm just a kid that makes videos online that I get to work with brands like Ray-Ban. So all of it was obviously thankful um, towards you guys and thankful to God because he gave me the opportunities um, and kind of like allowed me to secure opportunities like this, you know? But yeah, so I mean, uh, these are my props, even though it's Ramadan and I can't eat. Um, I'm going to be using these as props. Like when first, when Ray-Ban first reached out, I was like, y'all want me? You want me to showcase the glasses? Me? Aw, oh, gee, thank you. I never thought you'd ask. All right, that's the building that we're shooting at. It's the Museum of Modern Arts over here in New Orleans. I'm shooting over here. I look like a goddamn tourist. Even this is my hometown. There's like people here 
and me putting my hand up like this makes me look like a tourist even more but i'm gonna do it even more because here's like my theory right if i look like an idiot enough people are gonna be like okay he's a tourist he doesn't really know the area around so it's okay if he acts like a complete idiot because like this is the first time being here and he's probably super fascinated by like everything that's here so that's kind of like my approach onto like how i'm doing it all i look like an idiot because i'm holding these two like, who the heck runs around holding a banana and an orange i probably look like an idiot trying to juggle a freaking orange and a banana i got the shot we're done here we can finally go home dude look how good this is also i'm filming on my iphone 12 pro max look how nice the colors are and how stable the footage is you guys always ask me like yo you said what do you shoot on whenever i have footage like this you guys can tell it's shot on my iphone i don't really carry like an extra camera because like iphones are so advanced nowadays what's the point of carrying a camera like a whole nother camera you have to like fidget with the settings for an iphone you just hit record and the settings automatically go to where you want and that everything looks perfect uh other than that i use a sony a7 III. all right we're back in the dad mobile i was thinking it'd be cool to kind of showcase the hands-free features if i got a bike so i don't have a bike here anymore i haven't owned a bike since i was like a little beta since i was a little betty i was a little butcha so i'm gonna try and get one of those bike rental things those things are so trippy though because the bike is so light iftar is in an hour and i need to do this quickly shoot i'm going to go on a park here parallel parking oh that was not good leave these in the car because i'm not using them i know we're not supposed to be talking about our hunger during ramadan but god i am so hungry dude and so thirsty i can eat a freaking cow right now but speaking of cows so my older sister Abi, if you're watching this i love you so much but you're a fatty because she was like oh for eat you can just get me food so she loves bubble tea what i think i'm going to do i think i'm going to get her like a 50 dollar like gift card from um, kung fu tea Voila, I am so happy that I came out to shoot today. Like, this makes me so happy. Like, driving a bike or something so, like, small and mundane reminds me of my childhood. And voila, it makes me so happy. Like, I feel like a child again, you know? That was really fun. That was really, really fun. <laughs> I hope I got the shots that I needed. Um, but, alhamdulillah, I don't know. I think since COVID start, uh, ended, I felt, I feel like... I became really reserved and I became really isolated. It would be such a bad parking job. Dad definitely didn't park the car. It's not like I'm getting into it or anything. When COVID happened, I didn't have a problem with staying in my room all day and just like being introverted, like extremely introverted and not like seeing other people. But then COVID ended and the world, alhamdulillah, kind of went back to normal. And now, that I'm doing things that are quote unquote normal, like from the pre-COVID times, I'm starting to realize how much COVID affected me and affected my mental health. In COVID, I was high key depressed. I was just in my room all day thinking and thinking and overthinking and overthinking and overthinking. And I was so stuck in my head and I felt like I was in this box. So stupid things that make you really happy, like me just riding a bike. Small things like that make me so incredibly happy. It brings me like this really strong sense of euphoria. Usually when I'm out and about and I'm shooting for brands or companies, I don't have anyone with me. If I'm going grocery shopping, I'm alone. If I'm doing things for social media, I'm alone. But bringing you guys along and vlogging this whole experience, it was really cool. I want to do more of it. Hey. Like, you know how some girls you look at, they're like elegant and you can tell they're like super clean? I think you want a posh girl, like somebody who's rich and posh. Not posh or rich, I just want a girl that's like well kept and like hygienic and feminine. Posh. Posh. I just want a girl that's feminine, you feel me? A girl who played sports. Oh, that's a turn on, bro. Okay. Yeah. What about, uh... I want a girl that's like a gym junkie, bro, that goes to the gym regularly. What if a girl that played football in high school? Football? Yeah, there's girls that football. I wouldn't mind. As long as she's not too muscular. Because, like, I'm attracted to, like, the feminine qualities of a woman. Yeah, no, nah, but, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, the only thing about it is, like, I don't know, hands and feet are a huge either turn on or turn off for me. 
Like I don't have a, I don't have a foot fetish, but it's like if you have, you know, you know what I mean. Like like your hands have to be well kept and your feet have to be well kept too. No, I get you. Cause also just like it gives off like whether you're a clean person or not. Like your hair also like all of that just has to. I mean obviously you can't really say hair because like he jabbies like he jabbies right. But um, yeah. but you can tell if a girl is just like well groomed or not. All right, guys. So we're back home now, and uh, I just prayed Asr Salah and changed my clothes and stuff. And a couple packages from Amazon came in the mail. So I'm gonna unbox it with you guys and show you guys what I got because a lot of the things that I got, I think you can use if you're a college student. Bro, I got I got this starlight for my room. You know the ones that has a galaxy on the ceilings and stuff. Yeah. Hey, I don't know. I don't. I don't like those. I don't like them either. And then I like I was like, because Amazon asked me they're like, yo, what do you want? So I was like, what's on Amazon? I mean, everything's on Amazon, but I was like, what's on Amazon that I can buy, that I can also use in my in my in my promo. But anyway, for reference, before we get into these products, um, everything that's mentioned in this uh, little unboxing session is going to be linked down below in my link tree. So click the link tree; it'll take you to an Amazon link. And then in my Amazon link, I have like my own like use of little store and I'll have all of these like linked in there and you guys can buy it straight through Amazon from that link. All right. I want to marry this also, bro, but all those girls belong to the streets, homie. Yeah. I'm going to get canceled for that. <laughs> They're going to hate you. You're going to tell them about you not wearing a busy. Yeah, I'll tell them straight up. Bro, I ain't bro, no, I, I, do why? Are you only cancel? Here's the thing, bro. I, I, there, I have the right to say it because, like, I've lived in the culture and I've been surrounded by like Daisy girls my entire life. So I know how you snakes are. <laughs> hey yo, if you want somebody that's black, I'm here. You know what I'm <laughs> you know, I like chicken tikka, chicken tikka masala. <laughs> want to say it to the vlog, bro? Hear it. No. <laughs> I'm not gonna say. I'm not gonna say. It. Anyway, if you, any y'all are Desi out there, I got a African American brother down bad over here. He's from Guinea. I mean, he's from Gambia. Oh no! <laughs> Bro, I have a friend. I have a friend in New York. I have a friend in New York who's from Guinea, Africa. So I'm so used to like correlating those two. It's like Gambia and Guinea. We both start with G, bro. And both y'all black, so you can't even blame me. But if any of y'all, he loves chicken tikka, he loves chicken tikka masala, he loves chicken salad, he loves kurtas in Bollywood, he likes Bollywood more than me, so if any, if any of y'all want to get married, Masha, he's going to be coming. <laughs> Hit him up at Ibrita Zebra on Instagram, I'm following him, so go onto my following account and find him. But anyway, moving on, I'm going to show you guys the stuff that I got for my desk first. So, I got... A keyboard. This is a Bluetooth keyboard because to help me edit and whatnot. Um, a pack of Micron pens, dude. These pens are crack. I have so many of them. I have the blue one, the red one. I have the black one over here, and I just got an extra pack of it because when you're journaling, and I love journaling. So the type, the types of journals that I use, they're the ones without the lines because I feel most creative when. I'm not restricted to lines, you know? Like literally there's there's zero lines in this page, right? Imagine if you wanted to like doodle or, or, or scribble or you wanted to like create a whole design on your page. You can't do that if you had lines running across. And it just looks better and they're thinner and smaller. So you can dedicate one for finances. You can dedicate another journal for like spirituality or like growth. And then you can dedicate the third one to like business or whatever, whatever else you wanna go. Maybe like romance or However else you want to go about it. I'm a big sucker for leather. And uh, this is like a really cool leather journal that has a lot, there's a lot in it. So it's not just like a normal journal. It It's ruled, right? And it has like a bookmark. It has like this like stretchy. Mm. <laughs> I'll be doing some stupid stuff on the vlog, bro. And I don't even, I never, I never put it in there. <laughs> Continuing, but yeah, so this is like a leather journal. I'm gonna be using this for finances and for like accounting um, things. Like when you're an influencer, bro, doing your taxes is a freaking nightmare. So I, I keep a record of everything, digitally and on paper. And then on the back, it has cards. Like it has like these little plastic slots. For example, like your wife or your husband or your haram boyfriend like writes you a love letter, you can fold it up and you can put it inside of like these like little Ziploc container thingies, you know? So that's really convenient. Okay, so the last thing that I got for my desk 
is I feel like every, everyone should have this on the desk for like some way, shape or form. But yeah, I feel like every single person should have at least one or two of these. This is like a leather, um, it's just like a desk tray. You throw in literally whatever you want. I have currently seven watches that I'm looking at right now, right? And then a whole bunch of pens and a whole bunch of random things on my desk. And instead of having it all over the place, I can just throw them into like this bin. Link in the description if you guys wanna check it out. Ew, this is made in Turkey. I'm burning that. <laughs> Yeah, it's in the sheet. She's buzzing. Looky, looky, who I am a wheat. Right now, we're going to buy. What are we going to buy, sister? Eat gifts. Eat gifts. For who? Each other. <laughs> <laughs> Each other. The family. Memories. For next year, we're going to look back at this. Yeah, oh, I don't like the color though. Something like this plain. I don't know. You're wearing your ring. Can I see it? Can I put it in the vlog? I'm gonna be sitting here by this wall while Humna picks out some like loungewear for her newly married life. And I'm single, so I'm sitting on the. This is where all the single people sit. Humna doesn't really know this, but after she got married, my protective side got really really strong i was i got really really protected from her so like humna's husband i'm not saying your name or else the whole truth travel come after you but you better take care of my sister if you don't take care of my sister we all coming after you i'm gonna leak your name and we're gonna cancel you you're gonna lose your job and everything so you better take care of my sister seeing you shop for marriage life stuff makes me so protective <laughs> <laughs> it like brings it out exaggerates it even more come like i can't stand another man another important man in my life no i can't i literally i can't got a little crystal I don't believe in crystals, but this is pretty. Matches Humna's hijab. That's pretty cool. Holy crap. So glimmer. I don't understand it. What's the difference between that and that? They're just different. Um, and that. Um, they're clearly different colors, different pigments, different finishes. Like, you see how glittery that is? Is the pigments like the, the textures? The colors. Totally not overwhelmed. I'm totally not overwhelmed. So you're not? <laughs> nope. You should get that. Ooh, someone did a naughty job on that. It's pretty cool how she's like our cousin and she's in Sephora now. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> you're joking, she's not our cousin. Hold on. Oh, that's our Filipino bestie, right? Stop it. What's his name? Patrick Starr? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dang, that feels good. I don't know if it's like my thing. All right, so I left me and Humna. I mean, I left Humna at Forever 21 because I need to do some shopping for my sister but I'm going to head into Macy's right now because I want to buy matching watches for me and my dad so my dad is very minimalistic and he doesn't really like things that stand out Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah What the heck, that was so... that was weird I thought I saw someone that I know from Dallas and then for a brief moment you guys literally witnessed it I thought I was in Dallas but I thought I was like, wait, what is he doing here? So I was like, yo, what's up? And he's like, Salaam alaikum how are you? I was like, ah, alaikum salam, bro, I'm okay, how are you? My dad's getting older and he's aging like fine wine. My dad's a good looking dude. Mashallah, inshallah, I get to age just like him. Um, and I thought it'd be nice if I just like, I don't know, got us either matching sunglasses or, or watches. So I'm gonna check out some watches right now. Nothing too fancy either, cause I know my dad, he's probably gonna be slapping this thing and banging it left and right. So something that just looks nice, that's durable and is gonna last a pretty long time um, and that he can wear. They're just on this display for now? No, I mean, they're not on sale, but okay, they're okay. Uh, they're for sale, but they're not on sale. Okay, okay. This one is 630, 375. Uh, 630. $6.30 for that. I'm probably gonna be looking more into these two. Uh -huh. Yeah. I think that would be, that's one of your best choices. These greens are beautiful. I think they are very pretty. All right, so yeah, I've been home for a little bit and I usually go, on these little nature walks there's like this really cool canal by my house and uh, i kind of come here sometimes to think and uh, my phone died because i was filming a lot at the mall um but i got the watches from my dad i'm wearing mine right now just to see and it 
it looks way better in the real in the real world compared to just being under a lot of fluorescent light like seeing it right now the green looks so good the green looks so good i was kind of conflicted between the green watch and the white watch but i went with green because my dad loves his culture he loves being pakistani i ran into two of you guys the first one i didn't get to know your name but um it was really sweet meeting you the second one was ryan ryan dude you're an absolute sweetheart me and my sister were talking about you in the car your reaction when you saw us and uh it just made our hearts so full. I forget just how many of you guys are there. And there were a lot of Muslims at the mall today. And I, it was, I, I, I didn't think I was going to get noticed. But I'm so glad that you guys came up. If you guys ever see me in public, please come up to me and say what's up. This might be an, a very, very unpopular opinion. But never met a group of people who are more kinder and who are more spiritually connected and self-aware than you guys. Which is really cool because if I was to have a community online based off of anything, I would love it to have curated around those two things you for know, a while I, I swapped between both So Tarawi is finally over and um, which completes 30 days of leading Tarawi every night. <sighs> I don't even know how to start off this segment. <clears throat> I'm telling you guys, this this Ramadan was so weird. You know, I wasn't expecting... I'm telling you guys, every single Ramadan for me gets more and more emotional. And honestly, I don't know how much more emotional it could get because I've, I'm only 21. I'm so young. And I'm probably going to be leading Tarawi for another 20 to 30 years, maybe 40, 50 years, inshallah. But like, I can't imagine, imagine me after 50 years of leading Tarawi being like, yeah, today I led my last Tarawi and it completed 50 years of leading Tarawi. Like that's, that's insane to think of, you know? And for now, I'm not, I haven't even finished 10 years. It's only been seven years. Usually whenever I lead Tarawi, I usually just tell myself, especially after the khatam, I tell myself like, yo bro, just get it over with so that you can go home and you can like continue editing or Tarawi is kind of just like get it out the way type of thing, you know? But tonight when I stepped up on the member and when I was leading my, my final rakats, I told myself, Yusuf, just you need to enjoy this moment because you have people behind you, number one, and you have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in front of you and you are in the middle. You know, you're the one that's leading this congregation. And so I closed my eyes and I just recited. And I just read and I read my heart out. And I deeply connected with my Tarawi for the last time. And I deeply connected with the crowd. And I deeply connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that moment. And it felt so rejuvenating and refreshing in this weird spiritual but like religious way. You know, I felt like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought like a blanket and just wrapped me in it when I closed my eyes. And I felt like when I was reciting, my voice was getting more and more beautiful. And it's one thing when I am reciting and everyone knows that my voice is beautiful and I don't really think it's good. And it's a whole other thing when you let go, you completely let go into like this freestyle mode and you let Allah SWT take the reins of your recitation and you just really recite it for Him. When I was reciting Surah Fatiha in every rakat, I remember thinking about the meaning and just telling myself like, yo, this is words that Allah, He wrote these Himself and I'm about to recite them to Him for the last time ever, for the last time in the entire Ramadan, I'm going to be doing this for the last time ever. So enjoy it, Yusuf, enjoy it. And so after I finished Tarawi, all the uncles and my dad's friends would come up to me and they'll compliment me on my voice and they'll compliment me on like, they'll thank me for coming to the masjid and reciting the entire month. But in my heart, I felt like I was a nobody. I felt like I was just doing God's work. I feel like I was just doing what Allah SWT wants me to do. You know, like I said this earlier when I was filming for Ray Ben earlier this morning, 
I'm a nobody and I'm getting all these opportunities. I'm getting all these like compliments from people at my masjid and I'm getting all this love and all of this like craziness that's happening. And I see myself being used as a tool to bring people closer to Islam in whatever way, shape or form. And I'm gonna go back to this point again to say that I am a sinner and you're a sinner and I'm not perfect and you're not perfect, but Islam is, you know? I'm gonna keep on preaching that because like, we have this weird standard online to hold up Muslim, um, like the Muslim community is so toxic online. It's so toxic. We're always looking for faults in other people. But in reality, we don't realize that everyone has a different story. We don't realize that everyone is different and we're all just looking up at the sky and asking for Allah SWT's Allah's help, you know? So instead of like shooting people down and bringing people down, you should raise them up. The success that I'm having online, like the success that I'm having with my community, all of that is not me. It is all from Allah SWT and I want you guys to understand that because people think that greatness and they think that success and they think that happiness and joy is all correlated with like me, 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 like I have to do this, I have to do that. And yeah, it's right in Islam, you have to tie your camel, right? But at the same time, you have to have that deeper understanding and connection that it all comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you are nothing without it. After this Ramadan, I want to do an updated version of my, my religious journey. I remember my religious journey, the last video that I put out was one of the first ever YouTube videos that I've ever made. And I remember making that video without the intention of it ever getting the attention of anyone, you know? But um, a lot of you guys like that video and I, I wanna do an updated version of it because it's been a while. I made that video when I was like 17 or 18. It breaks my heart to say goodbye to Ramadan. But the whole thing about Ramadan is not about giving your all and doing so much ibadah and worship and reading Quran and doing all these prayers for a month and then letting it go when Ramadan, as soon as the moon is sighted and Eid is announced, and then you just completely drop all your effort, you know? I'm speaking for myself because the past couple of days after my khatam was done, I barely ever touched my Quran because I felt like I was done. I felt like I was done with my tarawi and I can just focus, quote unquote focus. And there's so many times where I would tell myself like, oh, I need to do this, I need to do that, I need to do that. Like, bro, your schedule in Ramadan hasn't changed. Like if anything, it's been more free. Like you have more free time because now you don't have to study your dedicated portion. So it's like, why aren't you actually putting in more effort for Ramadan? So that was a really big realization that I came to. And hopefully moving forward, I can implement more Quran into my schedule because I realized that everything that the Quran touches, God blesses, like Allah blesses straight up. And if I'm reading Quran on a daily basis, it's gonna be coursing through my veins. It's gonna be running through my body. So everything that I literally physically touch, if I touch my money, there's gonna be barakah in my money. If I touch my work, my work is gonna be blessed with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If I speak to anyone, that, that conversation is gonna have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in it. Because the Quran is so potent and it's so concentrated and it's so strong and rich that even if you're just reciting it and you don't understand it, it'll still find its ways to like bless different aspects of your life. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Like genuinely, thank you for listening. Like. It's these little therapy sessions for me and it helps me a lot um, just like get things through my head. Um, so I love you guys. Like today when I was biking and I realized like I was vlogging also, like I was telling myself in my head like, wow, I'm alone and I'm biking. But like in reality, I have my entire community in my pocket, you know? So then I pulled out my phone and I was vlogging also. And like, I don't know, it just, I'm starting to build this like emotional attachment to you guys and I'm starting to value you guys a lot more and it's, making me want to post more content and to share more about my life. But yeah, that's basically all for today's video, guys. Um, if you made it to the end, go comment down below. Comment on the number nine so I know that you made it to the end of the video. And I'll be replying to comments. I try my best to reply to comments as much as I can um, within the first couple of days while uploading. It's pretty cool to like get to know you guys in the comments section, but uh, I'm starting to fall in love with talking to the camera and I'm finally comfortable in front of it. I wanna eventually come up with an uploading schedule that I can like tell you guys, like for example, I'm gonna be uploading on this day or that day or whatever. So you guys can look forward to it and I can look forward to it as well. Like kind of little check-ins with you guys. Um, but there's so much more to come up in the future. So please hit the subscribe button because it would mean the world to me um, and give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.